Hello and welcome to Edupedia World Videos. This is the chapter 2 of the course Basics of C Programming. And in this chapter we will learn the steps involved in writing a program in C language. So the process of programming basically consists of these six steps listed in front of you. First is to understand the problem statement which is very important. You should first know what your problem is and then find a solution to it. Then you have to write an algorithm for this solution. So we will learn about algorithms as we go ahead. Step number three is to write the code to implement your algorithm. Then you have to compile your code. Now compilation is a step in which you convert your source code from a high level language to an object code which is readable by machine. This we have already done in chapter 1. Okay. So after that you have to solve some compile time errors. So when you compile your code you might get some compile time errors. You might have misspelled some commands, some keywords and these errors will be reported by your compiler which you have to correct before the code can actually be compiled. And ultimately you have to test run your code and then debug some runtime or logical errors. Suppose it's some line you had to multiply your result by 10 and instead of that you have multiplied it by 20. So this is a logical error. This you will not come to know during the compilation time. You will only come to know about this error during the runtime. So these kind of errors will be solved only after you first run the program. Then you will come to know that you have done some logical mistake and then you can debug it and solve it. So we come to the step one that is understanding the problem. So the first step to solve any problem is to understand and define the problem in a best possible way. So the best approach to understanding a problem is to break this problem into much smaller and simpler steps. So an, as an example if you take a problem that you have to create a pie chart okay so you can break this problem into these number of steps that is the first step would be to collect the data for the chart okay very simple and straightforward so if you have to create any pie chart or any graph you first need the data with which you want to create that chart the second step would be to compute the percentages okay so in your pie chart you know that you have to so the pie chart is what? It is just a circle and inside that circle various sectors are divided. These sectors represent the share of a particular value in a whole set of values. So that particular shares you need to compute over here. Okay, as we go forward we have to draw the outer circle. So now we have done our calculations. We have to display the chart on the screen. So the first thing is draw the outer circle then you have to draw the sectors of the circle so for corresponding to each value inside the circle you have to draw the sectors and then ultimately you have to apply the labels to each of these sectors okay so now we come to writing the algorithm we have now defined our problem and we have through with the first step so let me go to the second step where we have to write an algorithm so the step-by-step -step procedure designed to perform an operation and which, like a map or flowchart, will lead to the desired result if followed correctly is known as an algorithm. Okay, So algorithm is nothing but a step-by-step -step approach to solving a problem. But it should have a definite beginning and a definite end and it should also consist of a finite number of steps. Got it? So algorithms can be written in any human readable language. It is not important that you need to understand a programming language to write a good algorithm. To write a good algorithm you just need to elaborate the steps that you have to take to solve your program, to solve your problem. Okay, so here we would see how we can write a an algorithm just to solve our program problem that we have taken in the second slide that was to 
draw a pie chart. Okay, so let us look at the algorithm. So first step would be to ask the user to enter the various values for that uh, pie chart. So all the values would be entered by the user, including the labels. So you will also ask the user to enter the labels. So you should ask the user, you should explain to the user that he has to enter various values and then enter the labels for those values. Now you have to add all those values. So suppose you are creating a pie chart which is representing the ratio of boys and girls in your class. Okay, so now you have to first ask the user to input the number of boys, then the number of girls, okay, and then the labels for each. For so for number of boys, the user can enter the label as the count of boys, and for girls, he can enter add the label as count of girls as per his wish okay so also he will enter both the values now you have to add up all these values because you have to find the total of the students in the class okay so out of these this total you will finally find out that which angle should be given to each sector of the circle okay so now we calculate the angle of each sector by this following formula, which is simple pie chart formula that you could have studied in your schools, your mathematics. The formula would be value divided by the sum of all the values multiplied by 360. Now you will draw the circle on screen and you will draw the sectors one by one. So there will be two sectors and the values that you have calculated at step number three will be used as the angles for those sectors. Okay, so now you have done this. Now, ultimately, you will have to put the respective label on each of the sectors. So on the sector of boys, you will put the label entered by user for boys. That would be the boys count. So on the sector of girls, you will put the label girls count. So your problem has been solved. That is a basic algorithm example. Okay, so the next step would be coding for this. Okay, so you will have to write the code for each and every step mentioned in your algorithm. So you have to refer to your algorithm while writing your code. After you write your code, you have to compile your code. So compilation is nothing but your compiler. You have to invoke your compiler and tell it that this is your source file. So your compiler will read it line by line. Evaluate it for syntax errors, if any, and report it. Okay, if you have any syntax or any compile time errors, they will be reported. So you have to correct them and again compile your code. Once it compiles, you have to proceed to the next step, which is run that code and test it. In case any logical errors are there, suppose you have entered the wrong formula. So you will come to know only after you run the code and you see the result and you find out that the result is not as expected. So you will have to look into your code and debug it. Okay. Once the debugging is complete, now you, the programming process is completed. Okay. So thank you for watching the chapter two of Edupedia World Videos course, Basics of C Programming.